Hello my soccer universe. I was not necessarily planning to make a video on La Liga and Copa del Rey and everything happening in Spain. However, the action was so gripping and there's so much to talk about that despite there being an AFCON, despite there being an Asian Cup, which are at the moment my focus, I couldn't help. I need to talk about that. I was already thinking about that uh, for the Bundesliga, but I think I just about can hold off. Well, what happened in the, since I made the last video, just uh, one and a half weeks ago, it seems, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. First off, congratulations, Real Madrid, you're champions of Saudi Arabia in a tournament where everything about it is wrong. And I don't want to lose much more time. However, the lasting image uh, from that tournament will definitely be Brahim Diaz out sprinting Jan Oblak at the halfway line to score an open uh, net goal. That's all I gotta say in a very entertaining uh, semi-final uh, semi Madrid derby. How we have a Madrid derby that was way better. Yes, two goals less, but uh, three goals less, two goals less, two goals less, but way better in quality, passion and everything there. And kind of confirming why we need the competition to be held, these competitions to be held in the country where the teams are based in rent over so uh we will talk copa del rey which was all about that madrid derby which was brilliant absolutely brilliant decided by an absolute brilliant goal as well but we also have to talk la liga and especially i mean the last last weekend's round it was so weird because if you look at the results last friday saturday was all one nils you know very low then suddenly sunday tons of goals monday it goes back again to uh, being rather little, but that's only half of it. Not only were the goals, they were gripping games, and especially in the Real Madrid against Almeria game, there was so much controversy, and yes, you can only come to the inclusion. I mean, this was, I haven't seen this in a while, but the favoritism towards the big teams was so much on display there that you just have to say Real Madrid have to be sponsored by VAR. Because without the refereeing help, they would not have won this game. I'm absolutely convinced of that. But we'll talk about it once we get to the game. I actually want to start in the Copa del Rey, where it actually started with, with a surprise. So we are going to get tougher. Getting a rare 3-1 win. Athletic Club continued a great form um, with a 2-0 at home to Alaves. Was expected. Mallorca win the island duel against Tenerife in overtime. Then uh, the first minor shocker Celta going to Valencia Valencia side that I'm wearing they have been really good in the league as of late um, and losing at home 3-1 and mine was 2-0 uh, down after 80, 80 minutes but Pelo pulled uh, one back with a penalty and then Duvikas in the 80th makes it 3-1 so that was already a little bit of a shocker Real Sociedad beat Osasuna 2-0 which is never an easy match matchup uh, as probably everyone that knows a little bit about Spanish football knows Girona uh, at that time bounced back we'll talk about that with a 3-1 over Rayo at home Then Barcelona looked horrific against Unionistas, uh, being 1-0 down uh, in the 31st minute and I mean off the kick of Unionistas scored, 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 scored. Somehow Ferran Torres gets them back into it and then lay down Koundé and Balde in the second half. Make it a proper scoreline for Barca, but again, like against Barbastro, Barcelona in, uh, not looking quite right. And then the big one, the Madrid derby between Atletico and Real Madrid, and what a game that was. I would argue that in the first half, uh, Real Madrid had more of the game, created more chances, clearly on the high from winning the Super Cup. And then with the more or less the first chance on goal, Samuel Lino gives Atletico the lead. And it was looking like they are going with that lead into halftime, and then a really comically um, chain of errors leads to an Oblak own goal uh, to make it 1-1 at the half. However, uh, Morata re-establishes the, the lead and there were plenty of chances for Atletico Madrid to make it 3-1 and so on. And you thought, oh, you need to take these chances. Of course, Jose Lu is equalizing after Bellingham assist. Bellingham, who again, all over the place for Real Madrid. And it goes to overtime. And at this point, the only you know that there is some trauma for Atletico Madrid there. You actually should have probably won this by higher mar margin in re in regulation. Uh, Real Madrid come back. Real Madrid usually win them. 
This time it did not happen. And the game was decided on a brilliant goal by Antoine Griezmann uh, in the hand, 100th minute, where he takes the ball of Vinny Jr. Um, deep in the, oppos in, in the opposing half, runs into the box. Very acute angle. Uh, I don't know what Real Madrid defenders were thinking. And then Griezmann on purpose puts it in the corner. It was a really, really, really nice goal, I have to say. Worthy of deciding that one. Uh, then Madrid thought they had gotten an equalizer, I think, through Bellingham. But it was an offside. And then Riquelme, when he made it 4-2, the relief. This was not only joy. This was relief. This was such a thunderous um, celebration uh, there because you got away. Because uh, you, uh, Real Madrid, you have to kill them three times, four times, five times. They're almost like a zombie. Riquelme scores the winner and Atletico Madrid move on. Real Madrid out of the Copa. Also interesting. Also interesting are uh, the ties for for next round. Celta hosting Real Sociedad, which they just hosted this weekend and uh, it's already today on the day of post of the video posting. Then uh, Mallorca Girona, uh, kind of the two smaller, they, you know, they're kind of still in the Catalan sphere, the smaller teams. And then we have two pretty big ones. I think the biggest one is Athletic Club against Barcelona. Athletic Club uh, at the time of, of the draw, many considered to be one of the best, if not the best team in the league. And Barcelona are really, really reeling. So not an easy draw, draw for Barca as well. And we may have both big giants out. Atletico Madrid, Sevilla sounds big, but we know that Sevilla is really, really bad this season. So I think this might be an easy one uh, for Atletico Madrid. And well, we saw Sevilla in the cup might be good. So uh, it will definitely be an interesting week. Unfortunately, Athletic Club against Barcelona is so late because that would be a game I would love to watch. Uh, but I guess there's also great action at the AFCON and that takes center stage at the moment for me. But I have to say, uh, whatever happens in Spain really uh, is probably what I'm looking for most at this very moment. So let's go over to La Liga. Uh, because of this crazy competition in Saudi Arabia, Three games all involving the big teams have not been uh, played, but we had a few choice results. Sevilla losing at home to Alaves. Really, really, really bad loss. And despite them coming back at 2-2 in the 82nd minute after being 2-0 down at, at the half, they concede through Duarte. And to me, at this moment, Sevilla it is such bad state that you have to talk relegation battle. Uh, that's the, late, the latest point where they and yes, you may have Sergio Ramos back there. So at the moment, the only thing you can talk about Sevilla is fight against re re relegation. Las Palmas, big win over Villarreal uh, is also a choice result. Um, Mallorca 1-1 against Celta, the big one, of course, was. And I always think that the Super Cup, uh, they always try to throw in a Basque der uh, Derby to kind of uh, put some spotlight on La Liga as well. They did this well, but uh, that was thoroughly... Dominated at least in the first half by Athletic Club, where Berenguer scores two goals, but just, you know, typical Athletic Club style, very English uh, goals in, in, in a way. Yes, in the second half, Real Sociedad uh, came back, made it a game, um, and get a goal back through Yarosaval in the 88, but in the end, Athletic Club are deserved winners. At that point, they were even moving into fourth place, which unfortunately for them did not last, as we'll see in a little bit. But Athletic Club are for real, I think, this season. Betis won in lower Granada, and then also Girona. This was the first real blip that I saw of Girona, because they should have lost at Almeria. There's no doubt at all about it, uh, that they hung on to this nil-nil was kind of a little bit of a stunner and then Valencia a big 4-1 uh, at Cardiff and you see the three games that have to be made, made up somewhere at the end of January, early February, so that's in two weeks from now. Let's go to the last weekend. Uh, I think everything, I mean Valencia beating Athletic Club, that is a major result. Um, because that did come a little bit un un unexpected, but maybe Athletic Club is having their eyes on that game against Barca. Also, Real Sociedad uh, winning against Celta Vida, there, there, that, that's the other result that I want to point out here. And Las Palmas get another good win. Las Palmas is, is a really uh, surprise side of the season, flying totally under, under the radar because Girona is the big story. Uh, so therefore, no one is really talking about Las Palmas, but Las Palmas will easily survive this year, uh, when everyone thought they will go down. But we have to look at the Sunday games. Yes, also Sunday Getafe, 3-2, great. But 
Real Madrid against Al Almeria. Almeria, who, as I said, should have beaten Girona already and had actually a really good run of form without getting the results. It also has to be said. In the first minute, they take the lead through Ram Ramazzani. A horrible defending by Real Madrid. And Angelotti later said, yes, uh, it was his mistake because he didn't expect the players to be so tired. Well, you just had the trip to uh, the Arab Peninsula. You had an overtime game against Atletico Madrid. Of course, you're tired. But okay, you were, thought, you were thinking you will do it against Al Almeria. And Almeria playing really, really well. The 2-0 ahead of there through uh, Gonzalez. Uh, I mean, the ball falls his way and he just yanks it. Brilliant, beautiful shot. 2-0 Almeria at the half and the sensation is there. I mean, uh, that would completely outdo the draw that Girona just had at Al Al Almeria. If Real Madrid lose at home, suddenly it would make a big uh, swing to his Girona. And then the referee gets involved. Um, it has, as we said, this was a referee that uh, is, I think is in his first year here, has only a very uh, few La Liga uh, games. Uh, he got his big chance at the Bayer Bernabeu. And I think the referee per se was not that bad. What was really bad is the handling of VAR on three instances. Where is Hernandez Hernandez? Uh, a really proper, well-established Spanish referee sitting in the VAR booth. And puppeteering, absolutely puppeteering uh, there, and that I think drove everyone mad. That is not of a uh, Madridista, um, not a fan. Let's put it that way. Uh, persuasion, I want, I, I, I want to say. It started in the 57th minute when Real Madrid gained a penalty. It was a clear handball. However, there was a shove. The guy is shoved. I think by Jose Lu. Uh, it's just uh, into. The ball to commit a handball because what is happening when you shove, you fall forward, and then the other arm you want to uh, brace your fall. You may argue the push was not enough, blah 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 blah. Okay, penalty given. When I saw it in, in the replay, I say, okay, yeah, this will this will will be penalty. But given that there's a shove, you need to see it in the larger picture. So that was the first one, but I guess you might have just gotten away with one, especially since Arribas on a brilliant counter attack makes it three one for Almeria. And that would have, I'm absolutely certain, that would have killed the game. Because this Ramadan had just gotten underway and then suddenly, boom, you concede the third goal. And then that goal is, dis is, is, is disallowed in the most agonizing manner, to be honest. The replay, yes, in La Liga, hand to the face, they have been, they have been giving that, that foul. So I guess in that sense, it was correct. Uh, what annoys me here is the application of VAR. If you look the replay, the referee is looking straight at that action and has judged that this is not a foul. So to me, this is not a clear and obvious error. Why is Hernandez Hernandez re-refereeing? Of course, as soon as this goes to VAR, this is come coming back. What's even worse is that the hand 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 face is happening because Bellingham is slipping. Because the player that uh, is making the foul is actually uh, falling, is, is actually small and, and uh, Bellingham is a little bit uh, backward and that's why the hand goes to face and then he makes, uh, he falls. I understand that in the Liga, uh, hand, hand, hand to face is, we may argue whether this is correct. I think this is stupid in times, but because uh, especially if it's this was not on purpose, you want to get, get, get away. But what annoys me even more is the referee had perfect sight. So that's the second swing against um, Real Madrid, uh, against Almeria for Real Madrid. And this took forever. And pretty much after the reset of, of the game, Vinicius Jr. chicken wings a ball into the net. The goal is not given for handball and there was no clear angle. The, again, the annoying thing is that the only angles that the referee saw is that the ones that would suggest that the ball hit here. But there is no conclusive evidence because there are other angles where it's not so clear. Where you might actually come to the conclusion that it, it went on the hand. Absolutely galling, damning horrific re-refereeing -re and re-refereeing -re -re only for one team. If this would have gone the other way, 
none of these would have happened. I'm absolutely convinced of, of, of that. Well, with the 2-2, the writing was on the wall. Bellingham scores a goal that is offside. And very late on, at least Real Madrid can one, score one non-contagious goal through Carvajal deep into stoppage time. But I can so understand to find that uh, 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 Almeria is uh, uh, grieved on that one because all three decisions were at least contentious, and I have to, I have to say at least one needs to go Almeria's way, and uh, then it looks completely different story. Um, this is Hernandez Hernandez putting it upon himself of getting Real, uh, Real Madrid back into this title race. Let's leave that one and let's talk about Betis and Barcelona. Uh, you know, whenever Barcelona is down and out, there's one opponent that they will always prep them up. You guessed it, Betis. And Barcelona played well. Barcelona played well, took a goal through uh, Fiafa Ferran Torres to have a 1-0 halftime lead. Um, Ferran Torres then quickly scores the sec second one. It looks all good, plain sailing. Barcelona probably could have led by more. Iscado with two goals in a very short period. Puts themselves back and there was a 15 minute period where Barcelona was reeling but they get themselves back in, into the game uh, and, and score the winners then late. Uh, Torres assisting Joao Felix and getting his hat-trick after Lamin Yamal assist. Yamin Yamal of course also being uh, outstanding in this game. Barcelona for once deserved the win and as I said uh, the perfect opponent for Barcelona is always Betis. And then Girona, Girona Sevilla. I cannot say it any other way. If you have seen that game Romero put Sevilla into the lead and it was fully deserved at that point. Uh, and then with the first attack, this is Sociarona. You have a quick count, you, you catch the opponent out, out on the screen, you run down the wings, uh, low cross in and Dovbeek or someone else puts it in on the other side. And that's happened three times and Dovbeek scores. One with the head, two with the feet and head, head is within six minutes, hat trick. It was wild stuff. And Sevilla was done and done then. Tsigankov, the other um, Ukrainian, then gets uh, the 4-1 and Stuani laid on, makes it 5-1. Girona are an absolutely amazing team to watch. Girona are an absolutely amazing team to watch and I'm fully behind Girona at this point. Um, Girona are still top of the table after this one. However, Real Madrid have a game in hand, uh, which... You know, they probably will win, but you never know, as it's a way to, to get tough. Uh, it depends on which Real Madrid show up. Uh, the bonus for Real Madrid is they don't have to play Copa del Rey. However, long term, uh, Girona don't have any European commitment. So, yeah. Uh, coming back, you know, we have the cup action. After that, we have also an interesting round. Uh, Real Madrid to Las Palmas will not be easy. I think Girona at Celta is probably the easier draw if you look at that. Uh, Barcelona Villarreal, another pop prep up opponent because Barcelona always win against uh, uh, Villarreal and Villarreal in real bad shape. And then Atletico Valencia is also not an uninteresting one. Atletic Club have to go to Cardiff, a Cardiff team that looks really, really bad themselves so that was it from me from la liga what a round and what a cup round uh, we had and what we will have i have to say la liga is becoming probably the most interesting league for me at this moment and the bundesliga and the premier league are very enticing but what is happening in spain especially with the girona story but also the other things there's a whole lot of there so it's a whole lot, lot, lot of fun and that comes from an <sighs> Full on Serie A, guys. Serie A is not so great this season, unfortunately. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the games and especially the contentious decisions. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will talk to you soon about more in my soccer universe. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye.